Hey guys, it's Wajimp here, and welcome back to another video, and today we are going to be covering... Oops. <laughs> locate and the other 1.11 command block changes. Currently, we have 247 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. By the time this video comes out, I'm going to guess we'll be at 250, but you never know. But before we start this video, I want to say a quick thank you to my Patreon on Patreon, Shatter, so awesome. If you want to support me on Patreon, go ahead, there is a link down in the description below. And if you stay till the very end of the video, there's a thing that you can tap on if you're on mobile or click on if you're on desktop, and uh, yeah. So, on to the video. So anyways, yeah, so locate, is, if you don't know, is a new command added in 1.11, and it allows you to essentially find certain structures. So, the one issue though, is that I am currently in the overworld, and uh, since this is a void world, there aren't exactly any naturally generated structures. So we're gonna head over, and I made a bit of a change to, and I'm not sure why this isn't working right now, I made a bit of a change over to this area over here. We have now another portal and an end portal, so I could show you exactly what those do. Now, we're gonna start probably by heading over into the nether, but I need to turn down my render distance so that we don't crash, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's head in here. So anyways, as this is loading, the locate command, as I said, allows you to find structures. Say, for example, if I want to go ahead here and I want to say find where we are, uh, let me see here if I were to, and again, sorry if there's any lag, <laughs> slash locate, and you'll notice after you do slash locate, it just tells you to name a feature. So if you press tab, of course, you get a list of them, and let me make actually my GUI scale normal again uh, so that you could see. Locate, and say I wanted to find a... Uh, a fortress, because nether fortresses are pretty helpful. So tell me, it found one around 120.360. So we're gonna go teleport, wait in games, 120, current location, 360. And uh, you'll notice here, we all of a sudden found the fortress. It told us the exact coordinates of it, and it's very, very helpful. So say I also wanted to, let's see, I don't think there's anything else really in the nether. So we're gonna go ahead here and we'll head back. Let me just head to the nether portal, or actually just head back into the overworld. Um, and we'll head over here, back over this way, and we'll head straight into the end. Now, I don't know if this will be laggier than the other or not, but we'll check it out anyways. So yeah, also I love the effect that, oops, actually I supposed to have particles off. Um, I love the effect that the end portal gives, just mesmerizing. So we're just going to jump on in here. I am jettering this world as uh, I'm recording. And one thing you may notice about this video, if it's a bit laggier than usual when we're in the overworld, that would be because um, uh, we are simply put in, well, I got a new monitor as part of my setup, and uh, so I'm running two monitors off the setup now, so that would be why there would be lag. Say, for example, I wanted to locate an end city. All of a sudden it goes locate end city at um, negative 1192 uh, something 56. So I could go there, and now... I'm at an NC, which is pretty cool. You could just locate anything you want. So say, for example, uh, let's see, I, again, I don't know if there's anything else really to find here, but you guys, I guess you guys can probably get the point. Say, for example, I wanted to find an ocean monument. Uh, I could find an ocean monument. If I want a stronghold, I could find a stronghold. And I don't know if you could find... Um, yeah, it looks like it'll just give you the same... Uh, I think it actually might give you the nearest. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, anyways, point is you could find things like that really easily. And now I can increase my render distance, and we can move on to the other main changes in 1.11. Okay, so the first thing to note is that one fairly large change is that a lot of names have been changed. For example, all entities now have underscores, and you know, um, as far as I remember, and they have uh, colons, so they're a bit more, they follow the default Minecraft format kind of. And there are a couple of other like minor changes having to do with this. And if you want to know more about this, I will have a link down in the description about the 11, 1.11 NBT changes and additions, because that's what that's about. But we're going to be right now moving on to the main changes in 1.10 that I think are more important than the other ones. And those have to do with slash gives, slash title, and anything that sets blocks. Alright, so if we go ahead here... Uh, set slash give now ignores item specific st stacking restrictions. So, as far as I remember now, if I go and give myself stone, I can give myself 128. Um, no, oops. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? I think I know what it is. Um, water bucket two. Yeah, you'll notice. There we go. That's what it is. See, for example, I want to give myself two water buckets. It actually stacks them, uh, unlike before, because you notice water buckets aren't usually stackable. So that's that fixes. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so there's the slash give thing. And the slash title one we've kind of already covered in our first episode, but I'm going to go over it again anyway. And uh, let me also just, I forgot, I think, to go over earlier what commands we have covered so far. And the commands we have covered so far are shallow execute title, fill clone set block, and then what we're covering this episode. Okay, so action bars work pretty simply. So if I go title, and then I could go at P because we're tit doing title at the player, then I'm going to go action bar. And then again, I'm doing quote text. If you want to f figure out what the heck I'm doing and you don't know what I'm doing, check out my first episode, that Tubler's Telra Execute and Title. It'll all make sense if you watch that. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to tell the text to be um, potato because randomness. Uh, and the color will be um, yellow. Or actually, no, let's do gold. There we go. Um, and if I did that correctly, which I know that I didn't because I did a comma instead of a colon for some reason. Uh, what the heck? Oh, I did semicolon that time. I'm really bad at this. Anyways, yeah, you'll notice it shows right above the hotbar. So that's another kind of way to not disturb the player's vision completely, but to still display text, um, which was with uh, that, that little area there is called the action bar. And of course, if you didn't know, if I were to say, actually, dang it, I shouldn't use that. But see, I, actually, I know exactly what to do. So let me say I teleport myself to 255, set the block below me to stone. We know that there's a building limit in vanilla Minecraft, and you'll notice it tells me right in the action bar there, height limit for building is 256 blocks, rather than spamming it for me in chat. So that's pretty helpful right there. And uh, yeah, so the next thing we're going to be moving on, uh, moving on to, I can't words today, is what are called block states. So block states are essentially uh, different types of blocks. And again, I covered this in my, uh, let's see, what was, oops, Wait, I think it was my second episode. Yeah, it was my second episode of this series. And essentially block states have to do with um, what a block looks like. So say, for example, I had a an log, right? So when you search for log, you see all these different variants of logs. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. Anyways, you notice if I were to set that block right there to a log, it'll default to oak. Um, so obviously it couldn't be placed because there's already one there. However, one thing that has been in the game for a while is you could do, say, log 1, and it'll do the first state of it. So that's spruce. Log 2 is birch, etc. But now I could do, for example, variant um, dark underscore oak. Or actually... Let me see. What is it? Um, maybe it's just... Anyways, say I wanted to do... Oh, I see why. Um, what meant? Log variant colon dark underscore oak. And if I do that correctly at any point, um, essentially it would set it to uh, dark oak. But say I wanted to instead set it to spruce... Because uh, I don't actually know exactly what the dark oak one is called. Um, you'll notice it said it's spruce there. Say I wanted to set it to birch. I set it to birch there. And say I wanted to make it facing the x-axis. So I could do axis colon x. Um, actually, um, I think you do brackets like that. No, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> Anyways, point is that you could do that. And uh, I could also say, for example, do... Um, yeah, you could do different variants. Another example is wool. So if I were to set that block um, right there to wool, um, and I could do color red. Um, of course, again, I'm not actually sure what it's called. Um, uh, let's see, see, does it let me do pink? Let's see. Yeah, you often have to actually look at the block itself. Say, for example, oh, it's mid. Uh, no, say, for example, I were to do pink wool. You notice it actually says color colon pink, so I'm not sure why that isn't working. Maybe I have to do color and colon space pink. I'm not 100% sure, but <laughs> hopefully I'll have a kind of update for you for how exactly that works because obviously I'm not doing it correctly. Oh, you know, I, I think it actually color equals because. For some reason, it needs to be confusing with colons and equals because it shows colon, but then you actually, yeah, there you go, it's equals. That's, that's why I was messing up earlier. So sorry so much about that. But there's the block space states thing. Another thing, and this is the main last change, is what is called a target selector change. 
And essentially, target selectors are basically blocks, or, or essentially, you know, say for example, I wanted to test for a player exactly standing on this block. I used to be able to do, um, say, test, oops, um, test for at A, and then I could do 17, 5, or 17 comma 5 comma negative 141 comma 1 rather than doing x equals y so yeah essentially the full way to do it and the way that was that I like to do it is just x equals y equals c equals and then r equals um I guess I found nothing but as soon as I stand here right it founds me um so essentially that's a main change there you can no longer state it explicitly which or I mean, state it not explicitly, which is just listing the numbers. You now have to tell it exactly what it is. So again, when porting things to 1.11, you will have to change a fair amount, but it's not that bad. All right, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, go ahead and leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.